With Anatella, from within the graphical user interface, you can create the most amazing graphs or data transformations you can think of. But from time to time, you need to dive under the hood and look at the code of how Anatella stores these data transformations. For example, when we do versioning and we want to compare an old file with a new file, we have to look at the differences in code. Let's start with looking at a versioned file and comparing the differences between the current version and old version. If you look at those differences, we get the XML representation of your Anatella flow. And the differences are somewhere in the code. Your versioning system tells you where the differences are. Now it's up to us to understand what those differences mean. To explain that, we're going to create a very simple Anatella flow, starting with a read CSV, a small calculator, a write CSV and an ending flank. Quite simple. Before we start with analyzing the XML version of an Anatella flow, we first want to enable the action IDs in our GUI. We can do that in the Edit and Enable Action IDs. To look at the XML version of our Anatella flow, we're going to open an XML editor. You can find one in the bin directory of your Anatella installation called Foxy. If we open up the Foxy editor, we just need to drag and drop the Anatella flow inside the Foxy editor and we can very quickly see the XML representation of our flow. We can see the flow starts with the global parameter definitions. Then we have the actions and we have the connectors. When we dive in on the actions, we can see four sections, the read CSV, the calculator, the write CSV and the ending flag. So these are all our boxes. If you look at the details of the read CSV, we can see it's defined with an action ID, uh, IDX. In this case, it's one. If you open up the visual editor, we can see the read CSV box has action ID one. So they're linked. Same thing for the calculator action ID two, the write CSV action ID three, and the finishing flag action ID 4. If we go back at the details of the read CSV, we can see it reads from a file name and the file name is defined in the XML. So these are the actions. <clears throat> the next section, the connectors, shows how the actions are linked. If we open up the connector section, we can see three subsections. First one defines a connection between ID1 and ID2, second one between 2 and 3, and the third one between 3 and 4. So these are the arrows we draw between our boxes. And this is it. This is the main structure of how the Anatella flows are stored in an XML format. And now if we go back to looking at the differences we made in our versioned file, we can immediately understand where we have to look to see it in the GUI. Let me show you how. So we go back to our version file and we go to look at the difference between the current version and the last version. So the versioning system tells us where the differences are by the yellow marker in the site and we can jump directly to the differences. So we see in the previous version we were missing something and in the current version we have a bit of code. When we look at what the new code is, we can see it's an inline table with IDX8. Now let's have a look at the GUI and see where we can find that note back and see if it's indeed an inline table. So now if you have to dive into the XML code of an Anatella file, you understand what's there and you can link it back to the GUI. Especially when the graphs are really large, the ID will be very important to identify which node exactly are you looking at. So the next time you're looking at a file in Subversion and comparing the old versus the new version, you will know what the difference is and where to find it in Anatella. I hope the video was helpful for you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye.